I want us to shift from a slave to a soldier. We shift from a slave to a soldier. When Israel was in Egypt, they were slaves. Therefore, they didn't fight. In Egypt, Moses fought. Moses came with plagues and he crushed the power of Pharaoh and God delivered them. So with that kind of a mindset, they expected that God will also give them promised land. Where they will go to promised land and God will squash all the enemies on their way. And God didn't do that. The promised land, they had to no longer be slaves in their mind. They had to be soldiers in their mind in the promised land. In the beginning of your walk with God, you're a slave. Meaning you need a prayer line. You need someone to come in and knock that thing out. And when that thing gets knocked out of your life, you feel a sense of relief. But rarely, listen up, rarely will you experience complete freedom. Just from that. You will still have Philistines, Jebusites, Marisites and all other sites that will still kind of linger there. And there you don't need just Moses. You need to mature to become a soldier. A soldier means you don't wait for God to send the plague. God is waiting on you to send you. God wants to kill the slavery mindset. Wilderness is a time where slavery mindset dies. Unfortunately, some of us are married to that mindset, so we die with it. And we never enter into a season, into a part of our life where we fight. We always need a Moses. And the reason why is because of a slavery mindset. God wants to bring a mindset in you of a soldier. Slave mindset says, God, deliver me. A soldier mind says, God, you are with me and I'm going to fight. A slavery mindset says, Father, you didn't give me a go to go rejoice with my friends. And God says, I thought you grew up already. I thought you heard that I divided the possessions between him and you. That's your stuff. I gave it to you. I can't give you more than what I gave you. Go and get your own goat. Meaning, I gave you that victory. I got you out of the main big problems. And not only I gave you small freedom, I gave you big authority. Act on it. Fight with it. Don't wait until the preacher will come. But I remember I would even pray for some time for people and they experience freedom. The next day they come back, especially at the conference, they say, Pastor, but I still have this little bitty, little bitty thing. I was like, how big is it? Size of a spider or an elephant? Uh, a size of a mosquito. I was like, squash it. He said, but I want you to squash it. I'm going to tell you why God doesn't deliver us in prayer lines and deliverance services completely. I'm going to give you this verse. Look at this verse from Judges. In this verse God said why he leaves us out. He says that I leave certain enemies for this reason that I will test you whether you're going to obey God and I will teach you to fight. To two reasons. Anytime you wondered why the Lord didn't deliver me completely. Why he gave me just the main deliverances? I want you to remember this. Test. Somebody say test. So it means God is testing. When you are still struggling with that, will you choose to obey me? Because it's not hard to obey God when, you, when nothing is pulling for your attention. Test. And then secondly, he says, I will teach you. Somebody say teach. What does God want me to teach you? Not patience, but fighting. God doesn't want to teach me to struggle. He wants me to teach me to fight. God doesn't want to teach me to strive. He wants to teach me to fight. He says, I will teach you. To fight. God allows certain things to linger in your life, to build within you a mechanism of a warrior. Because even when you overcome that issue, you will still have many other battles to fight. They will not relate to you. It will relate to your destiny and destinies of other people. And you will need the skills to be a fighter. Jesus wept but he never complained. Jesus wasn't a whiner. Jesus was a warrior. God isn't interested in just delivering you from slavery. He wants to form within you a soldier and to do that sometimes certain things are left on purpose. God leaves those little mosquitoes and there's those little spiders. Why? So you will exercise your dominion. But you keep saying, Lord, but you do that. And God says, I gave you that power. I want to help those people here who maybe feel like, but the addiction that I have, the struggle that I have is so much stronger than I. I want you to remember this. Bob Larson is the one that told me this. He said this, he said the, the part of your life 
Satan doesn't have is always stronger than the part of your life he does occupy. And the story, he used the story that really kind of helped me. He says the guy who had thousands of demons, he was running naked, he was already mental, he lived on a graveyard, he was chained up and broke every chain, yet there was still small percent that the devil couldn't take him. Running naked, living on, the, on, on, on the graveyards, but there was one thing Satan couldn't take. You know what he couldn't take? He couldn't take his ability to run to Jesus. Imagine, naked out of his mind still the bible says when he saw jesus he ran he didn't walk he didn't jog he didn't drag he ran to jesus and the second thing satan could take is the bible says and he worshiped jesus and the demons started manifesting see when you start using the part of your life that is still free and push it to the maximum you will find yourself at the feet of the messiah delivering you from those parts you have no control over hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah the part you have freedom over use that maximize that push that through if a mental guy naked on the graveyard could still find a flickering light inside of him to say yes I'm naked yes I'm crazy but I'm gonna run to Jesus and I will kneel before him and the demons took over and they were free amen because we know two things demons never bring people to Jesus and demons don't worship Jesus why did demons fall from heaven because they didn't want to worship him and anything you know about demons is this they always draw people from God that's why many times when it's your day of deliverance you start feeling sick in your stomach and you quickly run to the toilet or you quickly you need to go home you feel that a rush every time demons never bring people to the prayer line they try to cause people not to come to the prayer line so the fact that we know the devil didn't bring him to Jesus he's somewhere inside found this small one percent to say but I'm gonna fight I fight I'm gonna drag that naked out of crazy out of my mind body and I'm gonna drop it at the feet of Jesus and that's where his freedom came don't give too much power to the devil even if he got 99% of you, that 1% is more stronger than the 99 he has. Devil is no match to the power of a human will because we were made in the image and likeness of God. God will never and ever let the devil take 100% of you. Can somebody say amen? If you're addicted to drugs, if you're addicted to alcohol, if you're addicted to pornography, if you're addicted to gambling and you may feel like but I keep falling, I keep tripping and I, I just don't have any power. No, you don't have all the power. But listen, do not discriminate yourself. Don't let the devil lie to you that you can't change. No, you can't. But with the power of God, when you use the little bit of that you have, God will say, I will step in. I will help you and I will get rid of those demons even if it's 6,000 of them. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord one more time. I remember going into my my dad's room and grabbing his gun, just holding it and thinking, just finish it here, Luis, and hurt no more. My name is Luis Quiroz. At the age of 14, I was introduced into marijuana. Making money at that age, it was easy for me to buy it. At the age of 16, having older friends with their own place, it was really easy to get away from adult supervision. That's when it started becoming a daily habit. In the beginning, I would use it to be cool, to fit in and feel older. Not knowing that slowly started affecting my health, losing a lot of weight. It started affecting my education, not graduating on time. My friends that didn't want to be a part of it started fading away. My finances started dropping. It started hurting my family emotionally once they found out what I was getting into. I started really getting depressed. I remember starting getting so bad that suicidal thoughts started coming into my head. I remember going into my, my dad's room and grabbing his gun, just holding it and thinking, just finish it here, Luis, and hurt no more. Not wanting to put my family in that situation of a lost family member again. It would stop me from making a dumb decision, but the suicidal thoughts didn't. August 2013, I had enough, and I remember praying every night for God to help me, to take my life, and I couldn't do it on my own. A month later, I went to the gym and met a, and met a young man named David. He introduced himself, and we just started talking about general conversation and then I don't know where he started telling me his testimony of how God changed his life how he was set from drugs and he was completely changed him being a complete stranger to me I mean I believed everything he said a lot of the things a lot of his problems that he had gone through in his past I was going through at that moment 
After that, we just shook hands, took each other's names, and went our separate ways. Ever since that day, I started applying those little things that he shared with me into my life. And I started noticing little changes in my life. What he did was he brought hope back into my life. He planted and sowed a seed into my heart. Two months later, I saw him again at the gym. And something inside of me told me, go up to him and thank him for that day, for what he told you. So I went up to him and I was like, hey, my name is Felice. I don't know if you remember me, but we met about two months ago and, and you shared your story with me. You opened your heart out to me. And you know, I just want to say thanks because it has helped me out a lot. He's like, wow, it's crazy how you think something so small can help out someone so much. I was like, yeah, most definitely. I just want to say thanks. He's like, look, let me get your number. You know, if you want to come to my church and learn more about what has helped me change or just hang out, you know, give me your number. He invited me to church and after a couple of invitations, I came to Wednesday service. That first night I came to Wednesday service, you know, I saw things, heard things, felt things I never did before. At the end of the service, Pastor Latimer asked if there was anyone that wanted to give their life to God. And quickly I raised my hand because I knew for a few months already that that's something I needed to do. And that was the night that I got saved. And ever since that day, you know, I started noticing more, more positive changes into my life. I started growing with God, reading the Bible. Blessings started coming into my life. The biggest change was my addiction to marijuana. From the day that I met David at the gym till like December, you know, I went strong without it. But I still had cravings in my head. I still had those thoughts coming into my head until I slipped back into it, being around that association. And I told my pastor if he could pray for me in that specific area. And ever since March 26, 2014, was the last time I used marijuana and other drugs. A month later on April 20th, was the day I got baptized. And ever since then, I've just been growing with God, reading the Bible, attending a home group. Now I lead my own home group. And just been helping other people who are in my situation know that there's a better way, that there's a better life than using drugs, partying, and alcohol. Now I know my purpose in life. Now I wake up every morning excited, looking forward for my future, because I know where I'm headed. I know the people I'm surrounded by. I receive so many blessings, and this is just the beginning, and the best is yet to come.